Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm super excited because it's Monday and it's the beginning of the month. So, um, beginning of the month for me personally is like a like a refresher. You know, it's a good time for us to kind of reset and like, okay, especially in real estate, you kind of want to look at your months like, okay, this is what I had planned for the month. This is what I got done. Where did I succeed? Where where did I fail? Where could I have done better? What can I adjust, right? And so for me, the beginning of the month is um, always super exciting because it's a refresher. And I would like for you guys to get into that habit of whatever happened or didn't happen in September, leave it in September. This is a new month, kind of like at the end of the week, it's a new week. At the end of the day, it's a, you know, the next day is a new day. Um, this is something that in real estate, keep in mind, real estate is a super stressful, like it's a high stress career to have. You're dealing with so much money. You're dealing with other people's money. You're dealing with huge decisions and it's on you to guide your client in the best way possible and if you genuinely want what's best for your client that's something that will stress you out because you you want to know that you're really advising them the best way possible um so for people that care which from what i've seen most realtors do care you know contrary to popular belief yeah there's some bad apples but but most realtors that are that are realtors for a while that are su successful they actually genuinely do care and so for me a lot of it has been learning how to manage my emotions also you know how to manage my stress levels so that my clients and now my team gets the best version of me and so even though September, I may have not hit all of, all of my sales goals, that's done and over with. I use that as a template to reflect. Well, of the sales that I got, where did they come from? Why, why did those go so good? Where, where, let's, uh, let's use some of you guys as an example. Who had closings this last month? You had a closing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who did you close? You only closed Lorena? Lorena. That was only closing? Yeah. What made what made that successful for you? What was the, what was the process like? Why why were you able to get her to closing? Where did she come from? She she comes from it was I, I met her. I met her in a store. You met her at a store? Yeah. Uh, what store? It was uh, a car store. Uh, like a dealership? Like dealer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she was there shopping and you were shopping? No, no, no. She is, she, she, she is one of the, of the employees. Okay. Yeah. And we started talking and talking and, and there, was, there was another lady and we started, to, she started talking and then I, I started talking with her and then she left. And we continue that conversation. Okay, when you started that conversation, were you looking for a sale from her? No. No, okay? So take a minute, guys. Pay attention. She met her at a store. She did not go in with the intention of meeting the person that works there and getting a sale out of it. All she did was put herself out there and have a conversation with somebody that she didn't know before, okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all are having the conversation. How did it come up, come up that she wanted a house? Because we were talking with the other lady and she was talking about uh, she, that she were from, from New York and we started talking that we were from abroad mm -hmm. and uh, so, so then Lorena, my client, asked me, where are you from? And I told her, I'm from Argentina, blah, and, and we started talking and I told her um, that I am a realtor and she said, oh, I was looking for a house, but I didn't like the realtor and the lender because they were not so clear and I didn't understand the Time process. Out. How long had you been talking before sh before you got to that? How long, how, how many minutes had you been talking before you got to <laughs> Five <laughs> minutes. 
five minutes. Yeah. Okay. And she was interested in you being a realtor. And she was interested. Genuinely so, interested. You yeah. didn't force her to be interested, right? No. You had something of value for her because she's telling you, I wanted to do this, but I had a bad experience. I, I was very transparent. I said, hey, I work with a, a, an, awesome te- an awesome team. The lenders uh, with whom we work uh, are very, very, very clear, very, they, they, they explain, explain everything, right? and they are very close, so Okay, I so again, time out, and I'm sorry, I'm going to keep stopping you, okay. because I'm, I'm using your case study as an example, and I want you guys to get everything that I want you to get out of it, okay? So, one, talk to people, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Everywhere you go, just talk to people, because you never know, you never know. You don't go in with that intention, you just put yourself out there, okay? This is your new personality. You all are public figures. You speak to the public now, okay? Genuine interaction. She had something of value. And then I lost my train of thought. And then you were talking about, oh, Leonard. Why are partners so important? Why are my partners, how does that add value to my client? Why would that add value to my client? What What's the difference between me referring my preferred partner to my client versus them going to their bank or any bank or you know calling that commercial that comes on on the radio or just Googling a lender online? How does that add value? Well, Ethel just explained. She, she was working with a lender. We have lenders that work the way that we want them to work, the way that fits our business model. And what fits our business model? What what sets the Franco Real Estate team apart from EXP? From Realty One, from Summis Realty. What 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 makes us so special? We work with people that we know and trust. Yeah, we, and they know and trust us, and we are transparent. And, and they know and trust friends. us, yeah. and we're transparent, and we're open. And how long had you been working? With, how long had you been working with Wendy before you got her under contract? A year. A, a year. year and, a month. and I had a year. On top of that, we're patient. We're patient. We're we're willing to to. We want them to succeed in their in, in exactly what they're looking for. We want we want them to hit that goal of getting that new house, and we understand that it's not a one size fits all, and that we can't treat every single client the same way. So let's go back to your to your story. Okay, yeah, so the then, lender, and then she said, "Oh, okay, I would love to," but she was working. So I said, "When are you available?" Because she had to work. And I said, and I asked her, when are you available? And she said, next Tuesday. And it was like Monday. So it was like two weeks later. later. Yeah, almost two weeks, 10 days later. And I said, okay, I will call you. Okay, so one more, one more stopping point right here. I'm very glad that you were aware and you made that observation because you, remember we always say you have to be in control of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So even though she's at her place of employment, Ethel's got the little flags going off like, I'd love to speak with you, you're clearly a good lead, but this is not the time and the place for me to be able to explain everything to you. Mm -hmm. So I see your interest. I have something of value to, for you. We're hitting it off. When's the next time that you're able to meet so that I can go through with my process? You follow your process. Don't let your client lead you. You're the professional. When you go into a restaurant, you don't tell the server, hey, it's time for you to take my, my drink order. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, well, no. <laughs> so, so, well, typically, typically. But you know what I'm saying? Like they're in control of of the process. Now that's a it's a different example because we're so used to it, we know what to expect. But same, you're in control of the process. You knew that what you needed to do was get more information, but that was not the time and the place. And this was also a good opportunity for you to collect information Mm -hmm. because a lead is not a lead if you cannot get a hold of them later you have to collect that information so I'm assuming that's when you collected her number yes okay she gave me her number I called her that day 
and we set an appointment. And then we met, it, it was like a whole month. Before you actually met? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and we met in a, in a cafe, and I and she came with her fiancé. Mm -hmm. and I Another thing that's very important, always ask, are you buying this by yourself, or are you buying this with somebody? If you're doing a consultation, have both people there. Mm -hmm. The other person is missing out on so much information, and they're not going to be able to relay the message the same way. Obviously, you can't force every client to do this but you want to make them aware like hey if you're buying with somebody when are you yeah. most available yeah she because it it's them, helpful but, but the decision was made by both. by both of them so i explained all the process we sat there i explained all the process and then we started shopping so it was <laughs> and that's something that it's not going to happen with every client like this because they are so nice and awesome people, because they are. So it was uh, it was so easy yeah. to work with, with them. Good. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Questions on this case study? Okay. So lesson, just be open. Put yourself out there. Talk to everybody. You can be on social media. You can do your open houses, but don't shut off opportunity that you have on a regular store visit on a I had a client that I met while I was getting my nails done she happened to be the she was just sitting next to me mm -hmm. and we were just talking because she was the one that was sitting next to me similar story she had she had actually just gotten married so she was a newlywed um, mm -hmm. wanted to buy a house she was a teacher you know and 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 that was I didn't go in there with the intention but you leave yourself open to possibility. to the possibility mm -hmm. and, and and when you're when you're out and about in the public you just allow just be open just be open if you're if you're shut off there's opportunity that you're missing yeah so be aware of that you know, I know a lot of times like we go into the grocery store and like, uh, like I'm in my, you know, in my zone or whatever, but, but try not to, that's an opportunity for you to meet people that you wouldn't have otherwise met. Mm -hmm. Um, on the same token, if your energy is not correct, and this is actually another thing that I wanted to talk about, if your energy is not correct and you're not in that mindset, leave people alone. <laughs> See, no leave, people, leave people alone. You, you don't want that to be your, your first impression. Yeah. Um, and easiest way is like, just don't make eye contact, you know, just do your thing. Um, I, whenever I'm, whenever I have to go to the grocery store and I'm just not feeling it and I'm like, I don't want anybody to have this first impression of me or whatever, I'll have my phone and I'll have my earphones in and I'll just listen to music or a podcast or whatever. It helps me because I'm so social. And that's my norm. Um, it kind of helps me just be here so that, you know, unless somebody really wants to talk to me, I don't, I don't engage when I'm, when I'm in that zone. Okay. Um, but I actually, that, get, that gives me a good segue into the next topic is be aware of your energy. So today is Monday. Some of you love Monday. Some of you don't. <laughs> um, we had an incident this morning. <laughs> we did? Yes. What? With the man. It just kind of oh. reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> um, be aware of your energy, okay? Be aware of, be aware of, of what you're putting out and then be aware of other people's energy too. Um, again, super high stressful career that y'all picked. Congratulations. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. It, genuinely, it is what it is. Um, so it's not about, you can't change that. You can't change the fact that a lot's on the line. Yeah. 
That, that, that you can't change that. What you can change is how you respond to it and how you act towards it, right? And so it's important for us to be aware of ourselves, okay? And I think, and I go through this too, if there's too many days where I'm like dreading coming to work, dreading talking to a client, dreading writing something up, whatever, something that's work related, I have to step back and understand that whatever thoughts are going through your head, only you can control those thoughts. Only you, and only you can shift them. And all it is, is it's a perspective that you have put on this situation. It's just a perspective that you put on the situation. So it's up to you to switch that perspective. Easier said than done, right? Easier said than done. But the first thing that you have to do is be aware of it. Just be aware that, okay, it's been two, three, four, five days. It's been almost a week since I've dreaded going into the office. Why? Why? What you resist will persist. What you resist will persist. It's not going to go anywhere. You have to address it. And sometimes it's addressing it with, you know, your coworker. Sometimes it's addressing a difficult conversation with your client, but you typically have to address it with yourself first. You typically have to go, go back and see like, well, why am I like, why am I feeling this way? Well, I know that right now I'm dreading, um, I didn't meet my sales goals for the month and I feel like I'm failing and every time I walk into the office I feel like I'm failing. That's a, that's a very normal feeling to have in real estate as a realtor. Um, and it's something very that, that you can easily fall into on a daily basis, right? That's a, that's, a to that's a story. I haven't met my sales goal, I didn't meet them, and every time I walk into that office, it's a reminder, and I feel like I'm failing. Okay, so until I took the time to put that in perspective for myself, I can't try to figure out a solution on how to shift my perspective. Now, why is it important for you to shift your perspective? Because all of this new business that you're trying to get, you're giving them this negative energy, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, that's the energy that you're projecting onto these people. And if that's the energy that you're coming in with, how do you expect to get new business? How? Do you want to work with somebody that has a negative ass mindset? That upon first meeting them, they're trying to get your, your, your trust and get you to, to make one of your most important decisions in your life. And there's something about their energy that you're like, ugh. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it is, but you're like, oh, I don't know. So put it in perspective, right? If you wouldn't do it, why would your clients do it? So you have to take a step back and analyze that. Okay, so now I know. Now I know that this is what it is. This is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like a failure. I'm feeling like I haven't met my goals. Well, it comes full circle to how we started this meeting. We have a new month. We have a new week. We have a new day. And everything that has happened in the past needs to be left in the past. You want to leave it in the past. You have to consciously leave it in the past. You will feel more comfortable leaving it in the past if you take the time to analyze what happened last month. You'll feel more comfortable because you'll say, look, I'm not just sweeping it under the rug. I'm going to look at it. I'm gonna look at September. I'm gonna say, what did I do in September? What didn't I do in September? Where were my strengths? Where were my weaknesses? What could I have done better? At the end of the day, you guys, at the end of the day, and this is one of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur, but it's also one of the most rewarding, you create your income. 
the value that you provide is going to be a clear reflection of your income or vice versa. Your income is a clear reflection of the value that you're providing. So again, if ever I'm not hitting my goals, that's the first question I ask myself is like, okay, I'm not, I'm clearly not providing the right value. I'm not providing enough value. If I only made $2,000 this month and my goal was 4,000, I only gave half of the value that I wanted to give. So how do I give this other half? Where, where did I, where did I miss the mark? Where did I miss the target? Okay. So you reflect and then you start to set your goals. Now let's go back to January. What book did we start with? Do you guys remember? Was it in January? The one thing? The one no. thing? Was it in January? Uh, you know what? It wasn't in January. It was when we got here. It was when we got here. Uh -huh. was when we got here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no. I was like, no. I was like, damn. I did try to read that book. It was on here. It was, it was, it was yeah. started here. That's what it was. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. Okay. The one thing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Again, super simple concept. Who is still using what they learned? Is anybody still using what they learned off of that book? I know. I have been doing the calls, so that's the one thing. The one thing, okay. So you go back to what's the one thing. If I could provide more value to my clients right now, what's the one thing that I could do? Okay? And so all of this is a reflection of what we can do better, but here's how we're gonna tie it together. We're gonna tie it together with, you have to be grateful for what you have now. You have to be grateful for where you're at in the journey. You have to be grateful for your wins and your losses alike. You have to. Otherwise, you will start getting resentful. You'll start resenting your job, you'll start resenting your coworkers because they're doing better than you, you'll start resenting your boss, you'll start resenting your clients. I've done that. I don't, I don't say it because I'm just telling, I've, I've been there and I've done that. You will, you'll start resenting your clients, you'll start treating them a certain way because you're so in your head about everything that you don't have, you're not thinking about all the opportunities that you do have. And, and, and all of that, again, comes full circle and it becomes energy. And it's this ball of energy that we're carrying and people feel it, whether they understand it consciously or not, it's felt. And this will stop you from creating more business. And because we're in a new month, we're in the last quarter of the year, we want to finish strong. I want you guys to have the ability to reset, hit that reset button, regardless of how good or bad you thought you did last month or the last few months or the whatever, hit that reset button and October is a whole new month for you guys to do exactly what you want to do. But you have to start with this crystal clear mindset and that's how you do it. So. Genuinely, I'm going to ask you guys to just close your eyes for 30 seconds. You're not going to say anything. Just close your eyes for 30 seconds. And I want you guys to think about three things that you are grateful for. One of those things being something work-related. Three things that you're grateful for. One of those things being work-related. You guys want to share anything? One of your grateful things? I'll start. I will start. I'm grateful for the clients that give us the opportunity to work on their behalf. And I'll tell you, that 
that little comment, if I'm ever having a difficult client, <laughs> and you know we get our share of them, I remind myself I'm thankful that they're giving us an opportunity to work on their behalf. As difficult as they may be, they will teach us something, and at the end of the day, we will be paid because of them. And I'm grateful that they give us that opportunity because I would like to pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to share? Uh, I said something similar, um, but I'm grateful for the clients that I've had so far. Like even my difficult client, it's not that he's he's difficult. It's just the situation. Like it's a crazy market, you know, and it's not his fault. And I think I was taking it out on him when I knew it wasn't his fault, but not not actively. Like, I don't think he noticed, you know? Like, I don't know, it's weird, but like, I felt it and um, maybe, maybe not. Sometimes that's the reason that they're being difficult is because they feel it off of you. Yeah. And so you you have to press reset and you have to <laughs> you have to come at them a little different. You know yeah. what? I had a I had a rude awakening one time. I was working with my aunt. I was working with my aunt and I was just super stressed at this time. And she asked me for something really simple and I kind of like I almost kind of like blew up on her. And she was like, "What are you like why are you so upset? All I asked you for was this. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm stressed out, blah, blah. And she was like, well, that's like, that's on you. Like, if you're stressed out at work, like, that's on you. You know, as my client, she had all the reason to be asking me for, it's like a document or a receipt or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I appreciate that, that she called me on it. You know, because a lot of times, especially with our family, that's who we're most comfortable with. Oh, yeah. And so I think because I was comfortable with her, I was projecting a lot of this onto her. But at the end of the day, she was my client, you know, and, and she was giving me this business. And I was totally just like taking it out on her. Yeah. I think each client is, because I'm grateful for that too. I think each client is a challenge. I, I, I see... Each client that I have, I see them as a challenge, a new challenge, because the way they they hear, not, not every every person hears the same way. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can explain the same thing in a certain way, and maybe you need to change because of the client. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end, when you meet with with people that are like difficult. At the end, they are not. Mm -hmm. They are just trying to understand the way they can what mm -hmm. they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the way I try to see things. Yeah, that's and a, I try to be very. Mm -hmm. I try to explain everything because I want to be uh, to be sure that I'm giving them mm -hmm. what they what they need yeah. and the best I can. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful, perfect description. And that's where our that's where our empathy comes in. Mm -hmm. Empathize with your clients. Um, whenever they're they're like like Ethel said, whenever they're they're just trying to understand and they're they're doing it in the best way that they know how. We have to learn how to be good communicators, right? Because we're working with so many people and it's part of our job. Well, not everybody is a great communicator. Mm -hmm. Not not everybody requires that of their of their job and and if i'm being completely honest the better communicator you are you're actually teaching your clients and it's something that they could use in the future with their significant other with their friends with their family so the better communicators we are we're actually and i genuinely feel this way we're actually being way more of service to to our clients than they even understand a lot of times mm -hmm. we have you know our client Daniel you know he, he's a perfect example he, he doesn't have the best communication and that's where a lot of our mm -hmm. you know and that's where a lot of it comes in but you do what you have to do and you communicate as professionally and effectively as you possibly can mm -hmm. and and you do what you can do and and either it works or it doesn't but most of the time it works most of the time it works yeah and most of the time they they finish changing their way 
of speaking, mm -hmm. the, 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 they start like engaging more with you mm -hmm. and and giving you like the the freedom to work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Does anybody else want to share before we move on to our final topic? Mm -hmm. I'm uh, grateful for so many team. things. I I moved from another country five years ago, almost six, and and that was a big thing. Yeah. I, I I I quit everything in my country, and I was very happy with what I was doing. So that was like a big challenge, and the kids and. And then starting like a new career, it's not just a new one. It's a, it's a new one, but I I I've learned so many things in my in my in my previous years working. It's a challenge, isn't it? It's a big challenge. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big challenge. It's a challenge because at the end of the day, it's something new. Yeah, but but you but you you understand that. Uh, and and you you know that everything you've learned years before you can use it you mm -hmm. can you can use it in any in any mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. it doesn't matter which kind of business you um, so that's why it's so important to be to learn to 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 do things mm -hmm. to improve your yeah. knowledge yeah hold on to your past experiences yeah. hold on to those past lessons that you've learned. Um, all right, last but not least, October. So we are going to go into a new month. And one of the biggest things that I tell you guys constantly is, bless you, excuse me. This is our beautiful calendar. It says failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. You are correct, Ariana Huffington. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but we know how to say it. That, that's awesome. We know how to say it. Um, October. So I talked to you guys about time blocking, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to you guys about time blocking. Now I'm talking to you guys about a whole new month, whole new goals, X, Y, and Z. Part of that is visualizing what is your month going to look like. And so I would like for you guys to take a few minutes Pull out your calendar, your Google Calendar, and just like on here, I have a couple of main events that I have going on. So one of my personal goals right now is to um, practice public speaking as much as possible. That's one of my personal goals. And so, um, one, I speak to you guys during these trainings and then I have them recorded. Um, we're doing the Sun City Investor meetings, invitations onto like podcasts or speaking panels. I take all of those really, really serious. Um, it's an opportunity for me to challenge myself. It's an opportunity for me to practice this, practice my craft basically, okay? Um, so for me, these Sun City Investor meetings are a big deal because it's an event that I'm putting on. It's a lead generating source. It's an opportunity for me to challenge myself and practice my craft. And so these are on here. On my calendar, we, we kind of had a, me and you had a conversation about this. You got, on, on all of y'all's calendars, you should have already for the month, a few main events that you have going on. For example, Anais going out of town the last weekend of the month. Why is that important for you to know right now, Anais? For me to know? Mm -hmm. How does that affect your month? Why is that important for you to know? Um, well, for example, like I, I told my client last month that I was going to be out of town that like it, I told him two months in advance because obviously like if something comes up that weekend I want him to know that somebody else might have to take care of him mm -hmm. but coincidentally he'll be out of town that whole week too so I was like oh great you know <laughs> yeah. type thing um it worked out mm -hmm. but in the due case that he was going to be here like I would have had to have encargarlo con mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And is that or is that not one less weekend that you can work on hitting your sales goals? Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, we can, we can go into all sorts of stuff, but right now for the sake of business and our, our real estate career, well, that affects, that's one less weekend for you to work. Again, you're self-employed. You get to set your own schedule, but as easy it is, as it is to do, it's also easy not to do. So if I'm not time blocking, if I'm not putting things in here that I need, that I need to take into consideration, I might be procrastinating and leaving all my, all my work until the end of the month and then, oh crap, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. Mm -hmm. I haven't even done one open house this month and I'm going to be out of town this weekend. I recommend that you guys give yourself certain goals. For example, I think you guys should be doing open houses at least two weekends a month, at least. I, I don't see a reason not to. Again, if it's not one of our listings, if you don't want to use one of our listings for whatever reason, I understand, or or there's another listing that you want to use, um, maybe it's in your farm area, maybe it's a better price point for you, whatever the reason, put it into your calendar now. Put it into your calendar now that I'm going to do an open house this weekend and I'm going to do an open house on the 23rd. So when you're making plans with your friends and your family, it's already time blocked. You don't have to know what house you're doing an open house on. You just need to know that this Saturday is going to be, or this Sunday is going to be blocked off. I'm at least going to block off half of the day to open houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. You guys should be working on the weekends. And I, you were just telling me the other day, how has your schedule shifted ever since you became a realtor? Ever since you got licensed? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I pretty much work 24-7. Yeah. It, it, it changed, it's, right? Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, it's the name of the game. It's the name of the game. You have to pay your dues. Mm -hmm. You have to work in the evenings because that's when your clients are available. You have to work on the weekends because that's when your clients are available. You have to show houses if you want to get a contract. And if you're not picking up listings and you're not working the listings, you're working buyers. And if you don't have leads, you have to go out and get those leads. How are you getting those leads? Open houses is one of the cheapest, most effective way of getting leads. We got Melrose and we got Leroy Bonds. Who did not get a lead off of one of those listings? I didn't. I did. You did it? Mm -mm. You didn't get any leads off of your open houses? Not leads that were oh uh, like not not good leads basically. Yeah. Okay, but you got saying. leads. Yeah. You yeah. got leads. That's the point. Okay. You, you're, you're getting leads. So you're doing the open houses, you're getting leads, of course, not all of them are gonna work, but how many open houses did you do last month? Two. One or two. Angie's been doing mm -hmm. hell yeah, open houses. Real. Angie's been putting in her hours in her open houses, and Angie's been getting her leads. You have a good amount of leads off of open houses, don't you? Like if you had to guesstimate how many leads not that they've closed, just leads that you're working that, you know, they could be a potential client. About four or five? About four or five. That's good. That's good. How much did those really open good. houses cost you? Time. 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 <laughs> <laughs> balloons. Ten of balloons. <laughs> the balloons. <laughs> 20 bucks of balloons, yeah. maybe, for all of the open houses. So, again, open houses, you don't have to be i talk about open houses because we're about to go into um, social media here in a little bit the biggest difference with social media and open houses social media you have to do it consistently every single day if you can't time block two weekends a month for open houses what makes you think that you're going to be able to time block every single day putting something into social media? That's a new habit, right? That's a new habit that you have to do. They all take work. And I'm not saying only do one or only do the other. But if you're struggling right now to get your leads and you really want to step it up this next month, I'm telling you how to do it. It's up to you guys to do it. Mm -hmm.
schedule in what weekends you would like to do your open houses. Now, take into consideration birthdays. Think about what birthdays you guys have coming up for your family, if your son, if your husband, if your best friend has a birthday in October, you can pretty much guarantee that that weekend you're gonna be doing something. It doesn't matter if you've gotten an invitation or not. <laughs> you already know, you know what I mean? Like, we're adults now. We know how our family works, <laughs> right? And and if we're in El Paso, we're, we're very, lackadaisical sometimes about making plans and we don't plan super ahead of time but if you have a birthday coming up on this at least this is how I work and y'all could be different but for the most part if there's a birthday this Wednesday uh, and it's somebody from the family I can almost guarantee that on Saturday we're gonna get together at somebody's house even if it's just cake and dinner so I know on Saturday, my evening, I've already blocked it up, blocked it off for this person's birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ahead of the game. You don't, don't wait for the invitation. Just be ahead of the under, like foresee certain things coming. And so if that's going to be the case on that day and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do an open house and then go over there. I'd rather just, you know what? Let me leave my open house for this next weekend or the weekend before or whatever, right? That's one. Two, we only have a few more minutes. I'm gonna to try to finish it in, I'm gonna to try to finish this in less than an hour. Social media. Social media, again, super streamlined, cheap, effective way for you to get leads, but you must be consistent. So again, I like to look at my calendar at the beginning of the month and say, what special events do I have going on in October? Well, I know that the end of October is Halloween time. Are you one of those people that's big on Halloween or aren't you? If you are, you can already start pre-planning Halloween content. Mm -hmm. You can start planning, okay, well, this weekend's going to be Halloween. I'm big on Halloween. Um, I want to go to a haunted house with my kids. Can you or can you not turn that into social media content that is relevant to your career? Yes or no? Yes. How? Um, maybe of the surrounding area of the, whole, the, whole, the haunted house, you could like check the area out. Check, okay. And go with your families if there's a nearby park, say like, oh, this subdivision has great entertainment or it's something. It's a local event. Yes. It's a local event. You all are local experts. So when you're out and about doing that stuff, take a few minutes and tell your family to, to help you out. I know you guys do a really good job at like having your, you know, your husbands film you. That's perfect. <laughs> that, that's that's perfect. And, 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 no, you, no. and you should. You should. They should be supportive of you. How, how much effort and energy does it take for you guys to... Let me just get a really quick, you know, one minute video. Can you film me really quick while we're doing this? Or are you just stepping away for a minute and selfie style? Hey, this is where we're at, blah, 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 blah. You know, local event, blah, blah, blah. You can also put out videos before the event, leading up to the event, inviting people to come. Even if it's not your event, it's a local event and you want to be the local expert. So stuff like that matters, okay? With that being said, I'm gonna give you guys a really quick crash course on stories on social media, okay? Really quick. Anai, if at any point you wanna jump in and add something, please do, okay? hard, <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> social media is about telling a good story. It's just like all the trainings that we've been to with Paul. It's just about telling a good story, okay? Stories. Stories are so popular because they're usually less edited. They're usually a little bit more raw. They are typically a little more on the spot um hashtag 915 now like it's happening now 
For anybody that really likes to follow you and really likes to know what you have going on in your life, it's a great way for them to keep up with, with you, with you on a daily basis. Because when you're on social media, you're going to gain followers that may not absolutely need to use your services right now. But if they're following you and they're engaging with you, there's something about you that they like. There's something about you that they like. It's more personal. Like you, 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 you grasp with that person. So yes. like it's more interactive. So if you use questions, if you use opinions, like mm -hmm. they're more interactive with you. So when that happens also on Instagram, whoever you interact more with, they become part of the, they're the first like top 10 people. Mm -hmm. Once they post, Instagram will say, okay, in your algorithm, if you look at their stories or like their posts more, they're going to automatically put you on their beginning of their stories mm -hmm. to check them out. And if they're following me on a daily, Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that they probably trust me? Yeah, oh well, yeah. They trust you, they like your your lifestyle, they like your personality, they, they're they more in common, how can it, not in common, but they wish you to be like you in a good way, like, they, it just goes back to lifestyle and how you are, so mm -hmm. that's the like most admire. reason. Yeah, exactly, a good admir admiration. Mm -hmm. So people do business with people that they know, mm -hmm. like, and trust. Mm -hmm. If I'm on social media every day, and I'm portraying my life out to people, and people are watching this on a regular basis, isn't it safe to say that they know I can trust me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, social media is not about instant gratification. A lot mm -hmm. of social media is about your branding, your personal brand. And you're gonna get a lot of clients that are gonna slowly and steadily come to you or they're gonna refer people to you, but you have to be super consistent. So stories, I gave you guys this challenge at the beginning of last month. You guys have done a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Props to Ethel and Ethel and Angie because you guys definitely have stepped up your social media game. Angie, I don't know how you're doing it. You're, you leapt. <laughs> you left. You, you, um, so we think of yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, real quick, no, no. if you guys were to just put up three stories per day. Oh, he's doing your post. No. Which ones? Oh, uh, so it's not working. working. I, I know my, it, my phone. Yeah, the working. internet's being a little oh. sketch. Like, right even now. my data is like horrible. <laughs> All right, so real quick, I'm going to just take you guys through what I do for a story. There's certain components that I use in a story, um, and it's my template. It's my template. So the first thing I'll do is I will take a picture. Actually, I'm going to use the ones that are loading so you guys can see. So this morning, I had a... I had we, we took this picture at the gym, okay? We took this picture and we took this picture. And I actually really liked both and I wanted to put them both up. But they need to make sense. If I'm going to put up both, how are they going to make sense? Mm -hmm. I have to create a story. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not going to give you guys a song that I put on here, but on but it's Monday. Ugh, Mondays. How many people have that attitude towards Monday, right? Mm -hmm. I've told you guys about the flow of the week. Mm -hmm. That's there. Play into it. Play into it. So on here, it's uh, Mondays. So I usually picture, GIF, mm -hmm. um, music. GIF, music, GIF, what, what? GIF one of those oh, little, those little oh, graphics. Oh, this. Okay. This is oh, a little okay. graphic. Okay, okay yeah. Mm -hmm. Music, and then me personally, I like to do that little typewriter, uh, the little typewriter yeah. um, font. Yeah. font. I think about it kind of like a diary. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, like I'm speaking to my audience, like I'm letting them know what's happening, but I, I, I like to think about it like my little diary. So here, uh, Mondays, the music that you pick is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't pick music. That's my problem. <laughs> I have a problem yeah. with my phone. I can't. And what I can pick is the <laughs> not good. 
Oh, you might have. She's on that. Uh, how I changed doors. Mm-hmm. Remember, she's got the you might business have. instead of creator. Mm-hmm. So oh, on your wow. settings, you have to change yourself to a, to a creator. Okay. If you're a, so if you, you guys, I don't know if you've noticed. Our Franco real estate page, the yeah. music is very different from my personal page. Yeah. You're if you're a creator, you get to look up mainstream music. So if you're feeling Pedro Infante, you're like, this is a Pedro Infante post. I can look him up and find something. <laughs> I know. I don't know. That was the first thing that came to me. You know what? And I think he's actually more of an actor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, is it you? I think he's a Pedro Novela. Since he was yeah, here this last awesome. weekend, um, your music has to flow with the story. So this, once you get, once it goes up, if you guys don't mind, just go into my stories and check it out, so it'll make more sense to you. Um, this song is like gloomy something, like it plays into this thing, and then the next one, J.K. We Heart Mondays, wishing everyone a great new week. Kissy face, and then this song. Um, and again, I'm playing into because this is my diary. I'm playing into my my personality a hundred percent right here. I did the little kissy winky face. You know, this is on my stories. Like, if you it's want to take this here. personal, yeah. like it's not yeah. to it's not to one person. If you take that personally, like that's on you. This is look. I'm just being. I'm I'm putting my personality out there, yeah. and people notice, and and people um, notice. Um, and then this song is very bomb, bomb, bomb. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is part of my Monday story. This is only my morning. If if I don't post anything else for the morning, this is good. Mm-hmm. This is good. Yeah. Now what I like to do, and what I would recommend that you guys do, I'm big on Pinterest. And so, um, does everybody have Pinterest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Like I'm not me. You're not me, guys. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I... check it out if you can, Ethel. Check it out if you can because it's a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. Here, I save, I save posts that I could use later for my stories. Usually, oh. they're, um, they're like little quotes that I like to use. So I'm not creating my own quotes. I'm actually using the ones that are here. And then a lot of times they'll even have Instagram, Facebook handle, Blossom, Candid, whatever. And it gives me the opportunity to also tag them in there. Um, So I'm a big fan of watching people grow and become healthier, happier versions of themselves. Now I have this. I say this because sometimes when we're transitioning on our stories, and this is the way I do it. You can do it however you feel necessary, but I, I think you do this also. If I'm transitioning, so I I took two gym pictures and then my next one is gonna be in the office dressed up. Well, there's there's a transition. So to ease the transition, I'll do a quote that's going to ease me into the next one. So gym, Monday motivational, this is actually like the perfect story for me to add. Mm -hmm. I would download this image. Now I'll have it in my roll. And then of course right now this is acting kind of funny, but I'm gonna have, okay, it's it's acting funny. But I'll have it in my roll and then I'll put it up. I may or may not put music on it. Usually if I'm doing a quote, I like to do like instrumental music, something that's not going to clash. If you're doing like a long, a lot of words on your story, you want them to read it, don't put music that's has distracting, a lot of words that has a lot of words. Do something instrumental. Um, and then from there, it's a good transition for me to move into now the workspace. Now I'm at the office. And easily, I could do one in the morning. I can do a transition. I can do one in the afternoon in the office. I can do a transition. And then I can do one in the evening with my family. And literally, you could do that every single day if you don't know. If you're like, oh, it's because my creativity, like, I don't know what to do. Well, keep it simple. Start with a template. If that's your template, use that. Get comfortable with it. It's kind of like the first sale by owner scripts with, with Paul. 
you use what you have right now until you get comfortable with it but you gotta you gotta use it first you'll know when you get comfortable with it and then you'll start to be able to put in your own little personal touch and you'll start to like understand okay i can do this or do that or you know x this or x that with that being said um i i would really like it if you guys just took a few minutes to look at your calendar and try to time block some stuff in what's the one thing that you could time block in for this week to get something under contract. Well, do you have leads? Do you have qualified Calls. leads? Yeah, if, if you don't have qualified leads, then you need to be working on getting leads. How are you gonna get those leads? Are you gonna make calls? Now, social media, guys, is very passive. Don't only rely on social media because social media is mainly branding. And when you get those leads, you get them unexpectedly. You cannot only rely on social media. So I recommend that you guys get into the habit of doing this like on Sunday night or early, early Monday morning. But assuming that you guys haven't done it yet, take a few minutes, five, 10 minutes to not be distracted. Just look at your calendar and go in there and say, what can I do this week to get something under contract? Yeah. And that's it. Hmm. Questions, concerns? No more. All right. You guys have an amazing week, an amazing month. I'm excited. I hope that all of us hit our sales goals. I feel like we can do it. Yeah. We can do it. We have all the tools. We have all the resources. You guys know how to cold call now. You guys know what to do on social media. You know how to throw a killer open house. You... You have everything that it takes. All you got to do is go out there and do it. Put yourself out there. Cool? Cool. I hope you guys have an amazing week, month, year, and I will talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>